Welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach when working with clients. We help gym owners and coaches build successful nutrition programs without reinventing the wheel. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. I'm going to teach you how to take one step at a time to build a successful nutrition program where you finally feel confident talking about nutrition to your members and your community. Today, we are switching gears a little bit and talking about self-care for yourself. What do you do to take care of yourself as a coach? There have been so many things over the past year that have been out of our control. How are you managing stress? In this episode, Ashley and I talk all about self-care for coaches. What exactly is self-care? Such a buzzword. Identifying how you manage stress and creating a plan to actually take action. At the end of this episode, I'm going to share some things that have helped me in this season. We will get to this episode right after this message. Did you know that Healthy Steps Nutrition has a partnership with Precision Nutrition? Both companies focus on a habit-based approach when working with clients. The Precision Nutrition Level 1 course is a great supplement to the HSN Mentoring Program. And because of our partnership, you can get access to this course at the cheapest rate possible and skip the line. Precision Nutrition has open enrollment only a couple times a year, but when you get the course directly through Healthy Steps Nutrition, the link is in the show notes, you get access to the exact same level one course within 24 business hours. Precision Nutrition is a great supplement to the HSN mentoring program and it allows coaches to have more tools in their toolbox. And at the end of the day, you really need someone, you need a coach, coaches need coaches, you need someone to keep you accountable, which is why HSN Mentoring is so valuable and why clients stick with us. All right, let's get to this episode on self-care for coaches. Enjoy. Ashley, welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. Thanks, Nicole. Always a pleasure to be on. All right. Today we are talking about self-care, which as coaches and gym owners is a topic that I don't think we talk about enough. Oh, I don't think it's talked about nearly enough and not even for just coaches and gym owners, really anybody who's in the space of helping other people, really prioritizing others as sometimes ahead of yourself. All right. So let's just, I mean, self-care is a buzzword, I feel like. What does it really mean? Well, self-care can be defined by the term itself, right? Caring for yourself. But it can include a lot of different things and really varies from person to person. So think about anything that you can do to keep yourself healthy, either physically, mentally, and or spiritually. Okay, that brings me to my next question. Why is it important? Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, self-care tends to take the back burner. You know, in a society where we're a go, go, go and working long hours and sometimes passing on our vacation days, there's this underlying belief that we always have to be productive, right? We always have to be going and doing something. But that can ultimately take away from our opportunities to care for ourselves. By taking some time out to engage in self-care, you might find that your pressures of everyday life are a little bit relieved, that you can reset yourself to get back to a healthy point, and your productivity is once again maximized or refreshed. Um, I think it's important to talk about self-care, especially in the gym owners and nutrition coaches realm, because like I said previously, we're always so concerned with helping others that you can't pour from an empty cup and you need to make time and be intentional about putting time aside to actually care for yourself. I think the lack of prioritizing this specific subject is what causes burnout. It does. Yeah. Burning the candle at both ends, so to speak. And it comes with some significant consequences. Um, They include, but aren't limited to, you know, the burnout, depression, anxiety, 
resentment, and a whole other host of negative implications. But when we do take the time and we do engage in self-care, have a self-care routine, it has been clinically proven to reduce or eliminate anxiety and depression, reduce stress, improve concentration, minimize frustration and anger, increase happiness, improve energy, and so much more. And from a health perspective, self-care has also been clinically proven to reduce heart disease, stroke, and cancer. And we talk about it from a spiritual perspective. It also may help us keep in tune with our higher power as well as realize our own meaning in life. So connect you with whatever you align with spiritually. I think it's important to think of self-care in these three aspects because a lot of times you like when you before we even started talking about this podcast, you automatically think like, okay, massage or, you know, I'm going to go get a pedicure. That's my self-care. But really like it encompasses so many other things to help you become the healthiest version of of yourself. And if you don't have a full cup, how in the heck are you supposed to help other people get a full cup? Yeah, I love that you brought that up, Nicole, because a lot of times with self-care, we automatically think we have to spend money on something, right? I remember being a teenager thinking like, oh, I had a bad day. I want to go shopping. Like, oh, let's go to the mall and go shopping. Um, But what is that actually doing for me physically, mentally, and spiritually? I mean, maybe mentally it, you know, takes my mind off whatever's going on, but I'm not actually taking the time to invest in myself. So remembering that self-care, it's going to differ from person to person. It's really going to be you finding what helps you realign, reset, and giving you that time to work on yourself. You know, I think last year, you know, in 2020 was an interesting year, right? Like we're go, go, go. And then COVID hit and I was like, okay, the world shut down. You're stuck at home and, and you are doing nothing. And I think it kind of forced people to really take some time for self-care and figure out what do you do to manage stress? And I know one of the things that our coaches did and we did with gym owners and coaches, like, how are you managing stress? Like there's a lot of things going out, going on outside of your control. And and it's tough sometimes to, to know what the best decision is or, or manage all of that stress. And if you don't focus on how you are taking care of yourself, you're, it's not going to be good for the long haul. Yeah. Mindfully managing stress, I think, is another thing that we don't look at, think about, or talk about enough. Because, you know, mindfully managing my stress might look like going for a walk around the block or taking some time to myself to read. Whereas mindfully managing your stress might be going to the gym and getting a good workout in with our team and our friends. You know, everyone is different. And what works for you might not work for me. And you might have tried things in the past that you thought would be good management, stress management techniques and help you with your self-care, but they didn't work. But please don't be discouraged. You know, please continue searching and testing things out until you find the best fit. But there's a catch. The catch is, is that self-care must be done both intentionally and consistently to find the maximum impact. Even five minutes, right? So even if you can put five minutes aside to intentionally and consistently have self-care, it's going to show an impact. Ashley, let's kind of dive into each of these. So physically, you know, we interviewed a lot of different psychologists and mental health counselors, a lot of people regarding, you know, stress management mm-hmm. and self-care essentially. Mm-hmm. And there's so much research that shows to phys- physical activity, improving stress, sleep, health, overall, like just helping you become a better person. And it doesn't mean like CrossFit is the answer for every single person or, you know, cycling Peloton is, is the answer for every single person. It's whatever you like to do when you are going to build into a consistent routine. For me, I know that it's, it's exercise and it's going to classes or doing open gym and being consistent with that. And, you know, I think it's important that your spouse or your significant other is on board with that. Jason knows that if I'm stressed, like I need to go to the gym and he will encourage me to go to the gym so that I am a happier person. Cause if I'm happier, I'm going to be a better wife, a better stepmom, a better human in general. So it's important that you figure out what you do physically to help you manage stress and 
self-care and make sure the people around you are on board with that and understand why it's important. It's not, I'm not going to the gym so that I look better naked. Okay. Yep. That's, you know, maybe a, a side effect, but it's really because I, I want to be the best version of myself and show up for our employees, show up for our clients in my best light. And that means I need to take care of myself. And you brought up a very important point there, Nicole. It's you told Jason, you communicated with Jason, hey, this is how I mindfully manage my stress. This is what I need to do for self-care. And this is how you can support me when you notice I'm stressed out. And I know he says, Nicole, get to the gym. I'll take over whatever you're doing. Just go. Because you laid that out for him. And a lot of times the people that we know, love, and surround ourselves with us, they want the best for us. But if we're not open with communicating the why and the how they can support us, they don't know. And I think sometimes as coaches or gym owners, it's really tough for us to ask for help. But the truth is we all need help. Like no one can do all the things like we need help and you have to be okay with with asking for help. All right. So we've talked about physically and Ashley, I know like my physical activity in the gym and although you join us for CrossFit classes, sometimes your activity in your garage gym is a little bit different than mine, but it's okay. Cause it's how you manage your stress, not how I manage my stress. Absolutely. And physically, as we said, there's so much research that supports like just even aerobic activity, whether that's walking, biking, swimming, yoga, there are so many things that you can try out and test because that activity is going to increase your neurotransmitters in your brains, increase those serotonin and dopamine levels, and it's going to put you in a better mood already. So that's what we're talking about, looking at how can we give ourselves self-care, manage our stress physically. But then we talk about mentally. And I think this is something that is just as important as the physically and the spiritually is mentally. I think, you know, you burn so many calories just like thinking all day, (laughs) right? Like your brain can go a million miles a minute. And, you know, sometimes we, we tend to keep close to us the, the hardest things that are happening, like the burdens that we have. And, you know, maybe like I'm struggling with something and I don't want to burden you with my burden because you have your own burdens. You know, sometimes we don't talk out loud about what's going on on the inside and we end up holding so much inside. And, and I think this is something that's not talked about enough, but, you know, Ashley, you and I both talk to people. Like I have a mental health counselor that I talk to regularly and, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's so important for an outsider's perspective. And, you know, Jason and I have gone to counseling before, not because we have marital problems, but because like sometimes it's it's important to have an outsider's perspective. And in the moment, if you're, you know, arguing with your spouse or you have a conflict, if you don't resolve it, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And having a third party to help navigate those things is so, so important. You know, mentally and having someone to talk to is, is really key, especially now more than ever. Yeah. And being in the space where, you know, we are in the relationship business and we, a lot of times as coaches, as owners, we do take on the burdens of our clients. You know, they we're here to talk to them. We're their safe space. We're here helping them with their physical or their even mental um, self-care in the gym or working with a nutrition coach that sometimes we don't feel like we can express ourselves as well too. And again, you don't want to burden other people. So having that person, having that mental health counselor has really been a game changer in my life. It's someone I can just talk to. There's no bias. They don't know anything else going on in my life besides what I tell them. And just having a conversation is just so relieving to me. And it really helps with my mental stress and my mental self-care. Some other things you can think about outside of seeing somebody um, for your mental self self-care is looking at different ways to relax and put your mind at ease. You can do journaling. It can be meditation, rhythmic breathing. There's a lot of different ways that you can help your mental self-care. But again, you have to be intentional and consistent to have that maximum impact. No, I think as business owners, it's tough sometimes because you like all the things that happen. Yes, you know, a lot of stuff that happens, but there's other things that like, I don't want to burden you with. And, you know, I've heard 
many times people say it's lonely at the top and like, who are you talking to as another business owner? Like coaches have other coaches, clients have a lot of people to talk to, but you're not burdening. Most gym owners don't like have the phone numbers that they talk to other gym owners on a regular basis. Like we just Mm -hmm. don't, and you're not burdening, burdening your employees with all of these things. So who are you talking to? You know, especially Jason now is, is on board. He left the fire department. We talk about a lot of things, but there has to be a cutoff point where I talk, I don't talk to my spouse about work or it's just all work, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like having that other person, that third party to help you see the blind spots is, is so important and just to talk things out. And a lot of times what happens when you talk to someone, I'm sure this is the same way with you, like you end up coming to the conclusion, Yeah. but talking out loud. And sometimes you say something, you're like, okay, I sound really dumb and I don't even know why I'm upset about that. (laughs) And then you're like, okay, we can move on from it. But saying it out loud is sometimes, you know, important. And, you know, journaling, I think is great for a lot of people, but you have to figure out what's going to work for you. And, you know, don't wait till it's too late. If, you know, so to speak, like you being proactive with it, like nothing's wrong. Like we're both perfectly fine, but we have someone that we talk to to stay healthy, not get healthy. Yeah. Cause you want to be proactive about it. Cause you don't want it to get to a place where it's unfortunate. And you know, another thing I, I like to talk about too, is looking at your inner circle. Look at those people who love you, who support you, who are a key part of your life. Now think about how many of them are a good person to talk to, how many of them are a good outlet for you and and have supportive, suggestive comments after you talk to them. Bring those people closer and then ask them, hey, when I'm having a bad day, is it okay if we get together for a walk? Is it okay if I call you or we get coffee? You might be surprised with how many of those people are really excited to help support you. But it's a two-way relationship, right? If I'm going to ask one of my friends to be there for me when I'm having a bad day, I want to make sure I'm also there for them as well too. And I think sometimes you have to listen to yourself. Like if you're constantly that one that's like complaining to your friends, like don't be that person, right? <laughs> like no one wants to hang out that person. But if you're like struggling and in a season, awesome. Like, yes, of course your friends are there to help, but getting an outside perspective is in my important, so, so important. Let's talk about the last one, spiritual. Yes, spiritually. And this can differ across the board, you know, depending where, if and where you resonate spiritually. No, I think this was one of my personal goals in 2021 is to, you know, get a little bit closer with, with God and what, what my faith is and just being a little bit closer in this season. And, um, you know, I think one of the things you have to do is, is be intentional and, and plan out with all of these things. It's being intentional and planning out the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know in the morning when I wake up, I, I open the Bible, I read the Bible and, and I have a group that's keeping me accountable. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's important, but you know, you have to be intentional with what you are doing to seek out your self care. Yes, absolutely. You got to be intentional and you have to make sure that we're doing it consistently because, you know, just like with anything, with a eating a healthy diet, with being physically active, if we're not doing it consistently, we're not going to reap the benefits. And that brings us to overcoming and considering obstacles when it comes to self-care. I would say that the most common, like the single most common reason I hear people give for not participating in self-care or putting it on the back burner is due to a lack of time. And I get it. So many of us, coaches, owners, we have a lot going on and we're always so busy prioritizing other people, but it's imperative that we take out the time for ourselves. You know, if you do not make time for you, no one else is going to make time for you to make time for you. Like yeah. people want to meet with you. You are pulled in a million different directions. People want to meet with you in the morning, at night, and all these different times. If you don't set boundaries, you are going to be a people pleaser and then you're not actually living your most fulfilled life. And I think, you know, one of the things that it really comes down to is what is your best yes? And what I mean is you're going to have all of these different opportunities as a mom, as a, as a business owner, as a husband, as all uh, any hat that you wear, like there's a lot of different opportunities, but if you say yes to one thing, you are unavoidably saying no to something else, Mm -hmm. right? Like if I am presented with an opportunity 
to do something on a Saturday. Saturday is our family day. Like I love the time that I spend with Jason and the kids and that is is our time. I will do everything I can to protect that Saturday. If I'm presented with an opportunity to speak at a thing or to join a, a meeting or whatever, and it's on a Saturday, if I say yes to that, I'm saying no to the important time, my family time that I get to spend on Saturdays with, with Jason and the kids. So it's important to realize like, we hate telling people no, right? Course, like we, course. we hate telling people no, but is it really going to help you live out what you want to live out? Like what are, you know, what are your personal goals, right? Like what are your business goals? What are all the goals that you have? Why do you have them? And every decision you make either takes you one step closer to achieving those goals or one step further away. And when you understand that every decision you make is either leading you to the place you want to go or steering you away from it, it's a little bit easier to start saying no and just say like, Hey, I'm really sorry, but I, I can't, I already have another commitment. And honestly, that other commitment is yourself. Like you have to make yourself a commitment. I love that perspective, Nicole. What is your best yes? And you're right. You have to make yourself priority. And I think about this the same way I would talk to one of my nutrition clients about something that they're having a priority for. So for example, one of my nutrition clients wants to eat healthier. And one of the action steps is to start prepping their meals. So they're going to meal prep. What do I tell them to do? I say, well, you have to make an appointment with yourself. You're going to block out the calendar, have time to go grocery shopping, have time to meal prep, make sure you hold yourself accountable. This is the same thing I do for self-care. I have to keep myself accountable to my commitment to myself because like you said, Nicole, no one else is going to. I block it out on my calendar. Like you have a certain day with your family. I have a certain night that I have self-care. My husband knows. He knows to take my son. I have a bath. I do whatever it is I'm going to do for my self-care night. And that happens. I keep that commitment to myself. And if another opportunity comes up where I could potentially say yes, I'd be saying no to that self-care. So if I can't reschedule that self-care, it's going to be inconvenient or I'm going to miss that self-care, I'm going to say no to that event. And I think it, when you start realizing and putting into perspective, hey, I'm really sorry, but I, I can't do it. It's it's okay to say no. It is okay to say no. Like it, it's okay. And you know what? People will understand it. If they don't understand, they're not really your close friends anyway. So it's, it's okay. And when you can start really being intentional with every decision you make and focus on what you can control, it's amazing how good good you feel, how much weight is lifted off of your shoulders. And you ha- you're you a thousand percent right. If you don't schedule it and make time, you're not going to do it. I know for exercise, I work out at 7 a.m. on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That is my time to work out. And if it doesn't happen, then now I'm not prioritizing myself and my stress management and mentally I'm not going to be as great of a person. So I block it out in my calendar. I reserve the class. I have an accountability buddy. We show up together. We do the workouts together, but you're, you have to surround yourself with people that are going to support you to reach your goals. Yep, absolutely. It's so important. You you said that statistic in one of our past podcasts, 95% of your success or your failure in life is about who you're surrounding yourself with. So guys, if you're an owner, you're a coach, whoever you are listening to this episode, I just want you to take a moment. I want you to think about self-care and what do you do, if anything, right now to keep yourself healthy, whether physically, mentally, or spiritually. Take a moment, do a self-evaluation. If you're putting that self-care on the back burner, which I know most of us in this business do, Have some time, even if it's just five minutes a day, have some time to start prioritizing yourself. Focus on what you can control. Figure out how you mindfully manage your stress. Because when it comes down to it, we can't help others without helping ourselves first. I love that. We're going to end with that note. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Nicole. I hope you enjoyed that episode on self-care. The truth is we all struggle. We all have our own battles. I think one thing that's helped me in this season is surrounding myself with people who will lift you up and being intentional with who you hang out with is so, so important. I can't thank my husband enough for being so supportive through all of this season when there's so many unknowns. 
Here's what I do know. Comparing yourself to someone else's highlight reel on social media is only going to make things worse. So get off social media and really focus on taking care of yourself. You have to do the work to take care of yourself and focus on what you can control. It is easier said than done, especially in some seasons. There are so many things out of our control and goodness, if the past year hasn't taught us that, I don't know what will. I heard a quote recently, direction, not intention, determines your destiny. What action are you taking to move closer to your goals? Are you even moving closer to your goals? Are you taking care of yourself? What action are you doing to take care of yourself? Now, I think we all have to give ourselves a little bit of grace. We're our own toughest critics. But as a coach, you really need to prioritize your health physically, mentally, and spiritually. Let's break this down a little bit. Here are a few things that have helped me. We talk about physically taking care of ourselves. Exercise is something we can control. We can control moving our muscles. This is the easiest thing that we can control. We know that activity and exercise is gonna increase our heart rate, which will release endorphins and improve our mood and our sleep. So if you are not exercising regularly and you tell your clients to exercise regularly, or even if you don't, I highly recommend getting moving because that is going to help you in all aspects, physically and mentally. The next thing Ashley and I talked about was talking to someone. Yes, a spouse, friend, coworker, all of those people are great, but it might be an option for you to talk to a mental health counselor. It's okay to ask for help. We all need it sometimes. One of the things that I work with with my mental health counselor is, you know, focusing on what is true. What do we know to be true? And if it is true, how is that going to impact what decisions you are making? So, you know, I think the battles in our brain sometimes get us confused on what is actually true and what is not. So we have to focus on what is true, focus on what we know, and focus on what steps we need to do to take the next step forward. Let's talk about spiritually. Reading a Bible, praying, that's something that I do very regularly. Whatever your religion is or spiritual, get in tune with that and be intentional, carve out time. Sleeping is another thing that you really need to do to take care of yourself. So I highly recommend that you prioritize sleep, you know, go to bed early, use the sleep strategies, make sure that your room is cold, that you're turning off electronics, that you have an unwind routine so that you can prioritize sleep and sleep well. Well, understand that you can only look forward and focus on the next step in front of you. Again, I know it's easier said than done, but I'm going to leave you with this one question. What are you doing today to take care of yourself? I hope that you enjoyed this podcast and you are prioritizing self-care because we all have to take care of ourselves if we're looking to help others. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast at Healthy Steps Nutrition. We believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. And HSN Mentoring provides a turnkey solution for coaches and gym owners to build successful nutrition programs. So if you are looking to take the next step and turn an informal conversation about nutrition into a comprehensive nutrition program, we would love to help you. Click the link in the show notes and book a free call today. Until next week.